What if I told you that it's possible to make a building that uses 90% less energy compared to standard buildings, that is much cheaper, provides more comfort and creates a healthier indoor living environment. And you only have to spend a few hundred bucks a year to heat and cool your house. And even when outside it's minus 20 degrees Celsius, you will be still walking with shorts and slippers inside. It's called Passive House. That's the first and only building standard in the world that combines the personal interests and desires of the individual with the public need for environmental protection. My name is Anton Dobrovsky, I'm a Passive House trainer and I teach architects, engineers and self-builders how to make energy efficient, comfortable and healthy buildings. So the Passive House standard gives you a framework, it gives you a few design principles that should be followed to make energy efficient, comfortable and healthy buildings, which of course also reduce carbon emissions and are much better for the environment. So what are these Passive House design principles? Well, the first Passive House design principle is having continuous insulation. Think of continuous insulation like wrapping your whole building in a warm blanket. Just like how a blanket keeps the heat inside and protects you from the cold, in the same way the insulation system protects our buildings from the cold. And it minimizes the energy that is lost through the roof, the walls and the floor slab. And on top of that it creates comfortable interior surface temperatures. However, continuous insulation only is not enough. Because every insulation system, every thermal envelope has its weak spots. And these weak spots we call thermal bridges, which is the second design principle, namely thermal bridge free design. You can think of thermal bridges like wearing gloves when you go skiing, because you have your ski suit on, you have the jacket and all this protects you from the cold. But if you do not put gloves, your hands are going to be exposed and they're going to get cold. Well, it's the same with buildings. There will be some parts which are going to be less insulated or even not insulated at all. And these are our thermal bridges. These parts, these details we have to optimize. In this way, we're going to further minimize the heat losses and we will also prevent mold growth and condensation inside the building. So by following the first two principles, we insulated the building very well, we optimized the thermal bridges, but our envelope, our thermal envelope doesn't only consist of the roof, the walls and the floor slab. We also have the windows or the transparent building envelope. And that's the third design principle, namely high performance windows. You can think of high performance windows like wearing high quality sunglass outside, which protect you from the UV sun rays and also from the sun's glare. In the same way are high performance windows. They minimize the heat losses or minimize the energy that is lost through the windows while maximizing the solar gains or in other words the energy that we gain through the windows. So by following the first three design principles we have optimized our building envelope, right? We have optimized all the external surfaces through which we are going to lose the heat but that's not enough. Our buildings should also be airtight, which is the fourth design principle. What is airtightness and why do we need airtightness? Well, you can think of airtightness like wearing a sweater outside. When it is cold and you have the sweater on, it's fine. The sweater is going to protect you from the cold. But when it is cold and windy, you're going to be cold because the wind or the cold air is going to go through the sweater. And it's exactly the same with the buildings. Even if a building is very well insulated, the air is still going to go through the building envelope. Therefore, we should have an airtight layer, which is going to prevent the warm air from escaping the building and it will also protect our structure from any moisture related damages. And a very important thing is that the gaps and cracks through which the air will be coming in and out of the building should be very carefully sealed. So by following these four design principles, we've optimized our building and minimized the energy losses as much as possible. But there is a problem, namely fresh air. Because in standard buildings, the fresh air usually comes and goes through the walls and the roof, through the windows. But passive houses, well, they're airtight, they're super insulated, so there isn't any place or there shouldn't be any place through which the air is going to be coming in. That's why we need a ventilation system. And if we use a standard ventilation system or an extract ventilation system, what's going to happen? We're going to be ventilating through the windows and extracting from somewhere inside. But in this case, we're going to constantly have to heat up all the incoming air from the outside. That's why we use a mechanical ventilation system with heat recovery, which is the fifth design principle. What is the mechanical ventilation with heat recovery? This is a ventilation system which recovers around 90% of the outgoing heat, namely the heat from 
from the outgoing air is transferred and recovered to the air that's coming into the building. And in this way, we minimize the heat loss through the ventilation system and at the same time, the air is being filtered. So when the air goes through a filter, all the pollens, all the allergens, all the pollution stays outside of the building and inside you only get fresh filtered air. And now I hope that you understand how important it is to follow these five design principles in order to create a comfortable and energy efficient building. Because if you skip some of those principles, well, then you might not have fresh air inside the building, you might have cold surfaces, meaning there's gonna be some condensation or even mold. So the building is not going to be healthy to live in anymore. And that's why it is important to combine these principles and always use them together, which is exactly what we do as Passive House professionals. So you see, Passive House is the future of the building industry. There is no question about it. And that's because the Passive House standard is the first step to making a sustainable building. Because when you make it very energy efficient, you minimize the energy consumption of the building, which you can then easily fulfill with renewable energy generation on site, like using PV panels on the roof, for example. And you can also use circular materials and in this way make a very sustainable building. I hope this video has given you a glimpse into what a passive house building is, what its benefits are, and inspire you to explore this exciting field further. If you want to learn about the six myths about the passive house standard, make sure to check out this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.